left in the zone one part of the proceedings, but we have an ample forum left to continue to do business in it. So, would you like to proceed? Commissioner Rice, I now remember what you're talking about. And thank you. Yeah, we had looked at that whole process of flipping uh, the restaurant, prospective restaurant space, with the amenities space, and so forth, and getting that door mass. Uh, by virtue of the shape of the rest of the building, uh, along with the, the notion that in public spaces, you have to go through a, a you know, restaurant or something like that to get to a leasing office and so forth, it wasn't working with the program uh, and the adjacencies needed to make the operation of the leasing office and so forth work. Uh, those needed to be immediate to the street. And so uh, that, along with the, the massing of the bar and so forth, that whole, that whole bar would have to push back and potentially require a, a third fire stair. So for all the reasons, uh, we, we had to back off of, of that idea. Although we likely to be lower mass and cherry, uh, what that did was it pushed the taller mass over uh, to the close to the bridge, which is which is you know, we uh, we're trying to avoid. Uh, that, uh, together with all the cumulative uh, uh, concessions that, that Mitch has accepted, uh, kind of left him with uh, not a whole lot of wiggle room to entertain big moves like that. So, so that was one of the All right, thank you. Uh, Bill San Antonio Green, I came up a couple of times today. Can you be specific about what types of design strategies you are offering? Do you satisfy what you are? Yes, certainly. Uh, Bill Santana Green is what he does as a guy points to as a mandate uh, with what, uh, how we respond. And so, in answer to your question, uh, looking at the law, uh, besides orientation, and, and I believe Mitch has talked about it. We have a uh, water collection roof across here. Structure of cars and it's collected here at the end, right here. But we also have uh, deep set windows here, so as to cut down to the west facing sun. Uh, we will also have to comply with the energy code uh, as, as prescriptive in the language with regard to uh, top board of the studs, you know, continuous insulation, as it's called. Uh, several moves like that, uh, as well as efficient uh, HVAC systems uh, and things like that. I think when we talked earlier at the DRC, uh, the Seal Harbor is on the south elevation closest to the bridge. That seemed to have a lot more reference to the bridge's uh, architecture than what it has now. Would you agree with that statement? It did? It did previously. The DRC version seemed to respond much better to the structure of the bridge. Now it seems like basically a simple harbor with you know, basically just vertical and horizontal outlines. Uh, up, up here is where we uh, have a simple, simple harbor. Uh, down here is where we have the uh, extra uh, tension elements, as you can see. There's quite a bit of detail in how the you know, plugs uh, and turnbuckles and so forth uh, would work. Uh, in, in, in that respect, trying to evoke the, the same sense of members that you have in the bridge without outright emulating and copying them, trying to, to, to tell a full story. So we do have these, these evocative elements without strictly copying what's there, but there are pin connections and so forth. Right. So those those elements are new. Yes. Uh, but I believe the harbor on the ground level, closer to Cherry, um, the first iteration that I thought or I could recall seeing was that responded a little bit better to the bridge because I, I made that comment during the DRC that I thought that was a great idea, but I just don't see that executed here. It, it's it's a, essentially the same. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's my memory that's failing. It also shows an image of the public art during the DRC that seems to be a bit more contextual and localized, um, much more than what you're showing today. Why is it? In, in a sense, it would be the public art uh, aspect of things. We're hoping uh, that uh, through this process that we move forward and reserve any uh, significant planning into the park area, 
pocket park and then those innovative space. To do that in collaboration with the city and the neighborhood and the community and so forth, uh, to come up with a new, better design that works together with the space under the bridge, to have a, a, a common voice, so to speak. And that process, uh, bring in the public art commission and so forth, to, to, to really get appropriate art as opposed to something we just plop in there on our own. Okay, so that's still working practice. That, that, that's a, a, a if, if that, those come to the past, it will come through this this body to uh, make sure we get that right. Uh, and then the last question I have is your decision to go for a certificate of appropriateness today rather than uh, conceptual approval for what is basically a brand new design that we're seeing. You know, what led you to that decision? Uh, as I understand it, uh, the, the, it's a good idea to get conceptual approval for anything that's in a historic district, anything that is of that nature. Because this is downtown design guide, none of that is, is referenced in the design guide. And quite to the contrary, it says you go to HCRC, you ask for your approval for a certificate of appropriateness, which is what we're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Larson. Commissioners, questions? I do have one question. There are a number of staff stipulations for uh, what is your position on those? Except everyone. about the drawings here. I'm, I'm looking particularly at the parking and I see it looks like 127 spaces referenced uh, relative to 141. And I think based on some comments there might be some confusion on exactly how this parking uh, works. Particularly maybe where the parking, how it ramps down and where you have a below grade parking. Can you just elaborate on that a little bit? Well, certainly, well, certainly. Uh, as James mentioned before, this is a downtown uh, building, so uh, there is no parking requirement. However, we know for this to be successful, we need to have enough parking. So we uh, push the building inside the property line by eight feet to accommodate parking here. People park on the street today and they'll be out board of the curbs you see here. So we're accommodating at least four, four eight, well, spaces here. Uh, as you come around the back here, there are visitor spaces up here, and there's a parking terrace here. Motor parking. Additionally, if I back up, you will see that, that that happens under this side of the building as well. And finally, there is parking. Sorry. There's additional parking underneath here. It's the parking that you see. Thank you. As to parking, of course, it has been brought up, and we have pointed out that uh, being in the downtown uh, zone, that you are exempt from the parking requirement that we require to have 1.5 to 2 uh, spaces per unit. If it were anywhere else in the city, if they were right across the street, you know, it would be required to have 1.5 to 2 spaces per unit. But since it is in downtown, specifically exempt from having to comply with that. So do you feel that it is appropriate that you can have less parking and then expect the surrounding community and neighborhood to basically uh, subsidize your project by providing parking that you refuse to do so yourself? Yeah, can you elaborate on what you mean by subsidize? Because the surrounding community is going to be supporting parking on there's public streets in front of their homes and around their neighborhood. Therefore, they're taking their neighborhood and supplying parking to your project. So the way we look at it, this is our neighborhood. Those are public streets, and we're doing our best to accommodate that great extra cost from the last generation uh, parking uh, that we wouldn't have otherwise. Now, there is also, as, as, as you've seen, an enormous parking lot here to serve the neighbor, uh, and so that that's, in our opinion, too much parking. Uh, we've done our best to balance the need for parking with the, uh, and it's kind of expensive, some of the parking, setting the building back and having that walkability and so forth. So what you're seeing is the culmination and true balance of all the different criteria 
to, to make and affect all these different things. So as we hem in the property uh, or the building off the property line to, to do all these things, it leaves us with less of a footprint to affect uh, things like what you're talking about. So what you see is the, the ultimate resolution of all these different things in their proper way. Uh, there comes a point where you say, okay, well, that, that's, that's what to satisfy the, the parking issue, which is not a requirement, uh, very well. So that parking lot that's uh, currently being used for Alameda Brewery, you're taking that into account? No, we're not. no, we're not, but it's there. But it is there, and it's available to the residents that they can park there day in, day out? No, no it's a separate property. Uh, making the observation that, that if parking becomes more of an issue, you know, there are options uh, you know, for the, for any development that happens. For your residents who are not able to get parking on your property, uh, since you have fewer than one per unit, uh, they're going to have to be allotted to, and I would assume they're going to be uh, rented out, uh, basically to whatever the market will bear, essentially. And so how does that tie into affordability? And you have 10 units that are considered affordable, but they're not going to be a lot of this parking uh, space, so, are they? So, so, so if I may, uh, the areas you're trading into don't relate to the design guide, so I just want to qualify that. Uh, I think they're good questions and certainly good concerns. Uh, to the degree that we're able to, we're showing as much parking as possible. Uh, and the added parking you see under the structure is, is very efficient and uh, comes to great expense. And it's the affordability, uh, I can't uh, speak to that. So uh, what I can tell you is, well, I'll turn to that. Well, how many efficiencies are there? We have 55. So we, we, uh, we're showing 55 efficiencies or studios that uh, are of uh, urban scale. Uh, they're tight, they're, you know, it doesn't have a, a separate bedroom. And those all are you know, our best attempt at, from a design standpoint, affordability by virtue of their size. So that, as I understand it, puts the rent uh, uh, right at about the low end of what rent is today in the neighborhood, less than $1,000. That, again, that's not design. Uh, but also, in the, of course, I understand that the last design is, is no longer here, and this is a completely new design. And, and by the way, I, I really do have to commend you on the design. It's beautiful. It's a lot much better done. It's very, very well done, in fact. But there's still a few deficiencies that need to be addressed. And so, but um, it's come a long way. Uh, before, it was a very exclusive situation. Now it is being a bit more inclusive of the community. Uh, that, that public space on the, the one side is great. I'd, I'd like to see a little bit. That's a concession to you that you're acknowledging that, and that's a good step. Uh, so, but again, as far as uh, if, if they're not able to, if your tenants are not able to get parking there, where would be their closest place to that's That's not something we're prepared to answer, uh, only because what we, our task is meant to. Because it's not required. Uh, well, uh, I guess that's, uh, that, that's part of it. We're, we're designing. Above and beyond the minimum standard, uh, 127 spaces is this uh, plus 12 on the street. That's that's doing pretty well if if we're required to have none. We, we understand that the, the reality of it is that parking is a fact of life, at least for a good while. Uh, now we have accommodated uh, and looked at the, the different aspects of you know, where the nearest uh, you know, via stops are, things like that, uh, and all all those reasons help us. Uh, you know, Embrace the walkability, complete street that we that we are designing uh, to today. And, and by your own uh, acknowledgement, uh, it is not in the in the downtown center. It's on the edge. It's right on the, the very edge of that. And and so all of this does play into effect, and all of it is a proper purview. There are other aspects that, of course, that uh, is, this is not the proper venue for, for example suits and things like that. This is not a court of law. This is not a venue court. There's no jurisdiction here for that kind of thing. Uh, although I do think, you know, that um, the court system, the legal system, should have its time to play out and answer those before we're even here. So we're a bit premature that we're here because there's a bunch of unanswered questions on that. But 
here's yes we are. So. Well, uh, you, you may want to clarify with staff and the city legal staff as well. Our saying is that your purview is to address our design and submit it relative to the design guide. And that's a uh, simple and it's our approach. You and me address that at the time that it's submitted by the applicant. If that were simply the case, then this would be an administrative process and we wouldn't be here today. Well, so, I'm afraid not. Uh, the uh, applicant has the right to submit whatever they want to submit and then we have to, uh, to, uh, to act on it when, when it does come through. I've got some questions about uh, the overall design. Um, can you uh, tell us how the massive is broken up uh, in terms of the Cherry um, Street facade, for example? Uh, there's a center block and then two hydrants and then the corner of blocks that turn. So this is your strategy for uh, uh, breaking it down from being monolith? That's part of it. Uh, and I'll point out here, uh, and as we showed in the diagrams of the PowerPoint presentation, you know, this is a mass, this is a mass. This is a mass, and a third mass is this one across the bottom here. This one is further articulated by it's being broken down and set back with a eight-foot balcony there. That's new feet by now. Uh, these are additive. This element here steps out. Here it, uh, it spans over, and it's further are down reductively from a rectangle. Uh, then we've got the main bar and opening. Group has the bridge of its own. We have this large pushback reveal from the street level, which itself is modulated every 30 feet down here as a canopy terrace. And then the terrace itself set back. This wall is set back. Sorry if you're getting dizzy. And up and around. And then finally we get to this uh, third mass here in the end, which fell here. A strong brick corner lower on this side as a terrace across here. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, these are uh, deep recessed uh, windows and sliding doors. The work areas across the front do have back doors and windows. Um, and could we go back to the Cherry Street side? Uh, the um, design, which uh, was rejected formally, uh, didn't have any uh, invitation to the street. So can you tell us what the the portal is that's uh, sort of principal entry. Uh, the portal uh, is intended to exactly do that. It, it invites you, brings you in into a uh, bike parking, I'm sorry, bike parking area, a little green space overlook, if you will. It also has a, another way into the little vestibule that takes you either into the leasing office and or restaurant. Uh, and then backing up a little bit, there is a opportunity for art and signage with benches here. And you go through a door here uh, to your left into the living room of the uh, main space where the leasing office is. And would you um, give us a quick rundown again about the palette of the materials? The brick is obvious, and the metals are in different kinds of panels. Yes, yes. Uh, we've got uh, a cementitious panel here. This is going to be a stucco with reveals, control joints. This is a different uh, panel down here that's corrugated. And back to uh, the cementitious panel up here. So it's a, a really an effort to ground the, the heavy and dirty masses, both uh, with the brick here, and then have a lighter, uh, visually lighter mass up the top so it's not as heavy. Very much like the, like the bridge, and then finally we do have uh, the board form concrete, uh, which is a little bit rougher. Uh, trying to tip our hat to the industrial nature of the area. Can you elaborate a little bit on those elements that are rendered in green, because you're, the, the green elements are presented on the documents uh, on the elevations. 
some of it is some of it is plaster and some of it is a cementitious fiber board. What you describe to us? Yeah, sir. Very good question. Uh, here in the center, the center bar is plaster, and uh, both flanking elements above the masonry is a cementitious uh, panel, like a hardy panel, a Nichiha, something like that. Aquatone. There, there, there are many. Yeah, the idea again is to have a, a smoother, lighter uh, material, and, and there is a, an offset so that they, they read as, as uh, you know, secondary material. So the, the green material on the outside corner, if you flip around to the, the intersection corner, uh, where the orientation of that material start, becomes horizontal. Exactly, that, that's a, a cementitious panel. about your question, um, but first of all, I would like to thank you very much for the clear, straightforward presentation. It uh, takes us through the whole process. Probably make us make and uh, be able to ask questions very quickly. Um, considering the height, how many units has the previous project from this project varies? Uh, the previous pro project was uh, on the order of about 142 units, and the, the one now is 148. Was 148. We're at 141 now. 141, thanks to the, uh, you know, we had a, a member of the community come meet with us, talked about the relief of this facade. So we introduced this uh, element here on the screen and then uh, reduced it to 141 of the units. Um, and the other question I have is that you break down the massing uh, quite so bit uh, compared to the one uh, we've seen before and then that kind of uh, permeability uh, factor is here. Um, I still have some concern about like we're talking about the project as it's contextual yet um, and it's really difficult to have a 100% a or a very successful contextual multifamily in a neighborhood that's basically a single family. Um, without looking at sections, um, cross sections where we see the base, at least the base of the building, how it's relevant or it's not relevant to the one or two story uh, buildings in, on Lamar and Tree Street. So, do, do you have any of those discussed maybe in the DRC? We talked about relating, not necessarily about specific drawing, and uh, the thought was. We would take some of the lines from the buildings across the street, fenestration porches and whatnot, and those would inform the we relate mass. That's what we see the lower masses here. And if you look at the, the windows and how they're somewhat lyrical relative to the rest of the building, which is very regimented and has a strong cadence, and that is that, that exactly that. It's relating to the uh, buildings across the street, taking those lines in a playful way. You know, to, at uh, a little bit of uh, to, to, to our project. Uh, you can see uh, here in the light model, you know, uh, the scale and the relative heights of each, and we can, if you like, do it, we'll show you a section. I think uh, to make up for, uh, for, for the spacing that's been added uh, to um, create that, that community park, which is really great to have as art. Um, I really admire that you, you plant in some of the San Antonio historic gondolas in, in there, here and there. I, I wish that they were all maybe in some area that, that could be more uh, attracting to the community. Uh, I still think um, you could uh, do a better job um, kind of relating that base uh, with more studies um, in terms of the proportion and heights and materiality, but also a recess of the top floor. Um, so losing one unit from the previous uh, scheme to this one may need a little bit of more sacrifice to within a couple of other units to create that kind of recess and that, or uh, maybe in a square footage of units available. Uh, but it will do a big job in relating the building and, and and scaling it down, even though it's still going to have a height, but scaling it down on the base uh, part. Um, I have a question on the design of the first floor. The first floor, please. Floor plan? Yes, yeah. just a plan. So I'm going to be at the um, accessibility board. Uh, 
um, for the um, elevator on on the south side. Um, is the ADA have uh, access through other ways of the leasing office, or the only access is through the like maneuvering around the the, the staircase? Yeah, during the operating hours, uh, these doors will be open both here and here. After hours, there is a, a secondary way to get through to here. Which is the same case. So, yeah. yeah, so that's enough for the, the wheelchair maneuvering, just okay. making sure about 42 inches at least. Yes. Yeah. And um, last question for the work lift. Okay. What type of work lift, like when that was designed, was about it? The idea is uh, to have general. Live work, work to live areas, mm -hmm. uh, and the, with the hope that there would be a lower level in the mezzanine towards the back, and it would be by code. It could be uh, it could be architects, graphic designers, web designers. It could be hair, nails, things like that that are commercial in nature, or not. That it could be someone's someone's at the home, and that's that's all it needs to be. Uh, but we're encouraged uh, by uh, our understanding from some of the different neighborhood groups that are trying to establish a, a retail presence. And things like live work would do very well and are not only desirable but in demand. Well, the reason I'm asking just to is you know, this is um, design, um, downtown design guides is requiring that kind of interaction with the first floor. So, if this is something that's going to shut down at five, this is not appealing to what the design guide is. Why I'm asking this question, which takes me to the last, last question now. The, the one in the corner, um, the restaurant in the corner. Cherry and um, Cherry Street and Lamar. Um, I, I'm just wondering why you didn't deal with the with the outdoor space of that restaurant the same way that you have, you know, dealt with the one back in the on the south side. Uh, but again, part of the uh, street interaction is most likely restaurants will have like um, a few tables outside. Um, looking at the sidewalk and the house breaking down between the grass and tree areas and then the sidewalk the side foot. Um, I don't see a room for that expansion except on the planter. If that's the case, uh, I guess the planter is still tied. So could you explain how? Sure, sure, sure. That's a very good question. Uh, the design guide talks about the minimum walking area of six feet. And so we have set this back uh, from the corner to create a uh, more comfortable corner, uh, corner plaza, if you will. So all the softscape here and the hardscape in front of the doors are uh, opportunities for, in the future, when there's a retail space, uh, not just a shelf space, for cafe tables, uh, things of this nature, even uh, pieces of art uh, and wares uh, and so forth. So we're creating the opportunity for it, but because that's, for now it's a shelf space, uh, we're only sparing so. But you still have to leave at least minimum three uh, to four feet for people to walk. So out of the six feet, you're going to leave only two feet to expansion. No, 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 no. The six foot or better is across here, and this is set back eight another eight feet. So there's a zone here. It's eight by sixteen, I believe, or even more than that. Uh, so, aside from some space, space for people to get in and out of the retail space, uh, there is also another door here on the side. Uh, there's plenty of room for some cafe tables and so forth. So, you're talking only about the section where that recess in in Cherry Street, but not in Lamar. Lamar does not have that room to to have a corner because it had the planter seven foot already. And seven foot just for people, but for the bedroom, so and then five, six, and that plan. So on on Lamar Street, if the tenant here uh, would want to do more than the space out here, there is opportunity to do something here. Of course, they'd have to come back to the commission. That was my the, question. So the plan is is a potential for that expansion. Yes, yes. Is it going to be leveled, like uh, it, even it, even? It, it is, except that it's it's uh, two steps lower. Now it can be raised, and there are lots of ways to address that. Uh, right now, since we don't know what what kind of retail person would be in there, hopefully a coffee shop or something like that, uh, ice cream, you know, those sorts of things, uh, but we don't know.
got a, I've got a request to sketch a model, and I'm going to preface it with uh, one of my concerns about uh, the relationship of the height of the building to essentially the width on, on Cherry Street first. Uh, the downtown design uh, guidelines for under the building design reference, uh, the building design should respect historically significant districts and buildings, including massing, scale, uh, neighborhood context. So I would like to see if, if, if you can rank a sketch up a section through this building uh, that cuts across Cherry Street, given that you have the residences modeled up there. I think we can accommodate you. I'm taking the tallest uh, building here in the corner. But you can see how we're relating across the street with a lower mass ending, and as we promenade through, it has that lower mass that's relating to the, the buildings across the street. And I don't know if you can see that as well as I can. <coughs> as we go, It, it is uh, you know, uh, chapter and verse, the, the section called for in the downtown design plan. And we have reliefs in the rest of the portal. The long, uh, more commercial building across the street in that regard. Can you pull the image back just a little bit so we're <coughs> at the top of the to move it forward just a little bit so we're cutting through one of those residences. Sure, sure. Hold on a second. It doesn't matter, I'm just trying to get essentially a section. There weren't any sections. That For I sure. Uh, the way we are, to answer your question, the way we're relating to the uh, historic context and the historic district is by the lower massing. Uh, certainly the, uh, the, the stepping back and so forth, all that, uh, having the canopy, having the wide sidewalk, all that, that's part of the, the streetscape. In terms of relating the massing, breaking it down, we've broken it down as in all the different ways we've talked about already. And this setback in particular is how we re re reference and respect the uh, across the, the street neighborhood. Now, if this were in the district itself, we'd approach it very differently. But, but since it's not, it's downtown, uh, most certainly we're looking at it a little differently. The, the part about how the lower portions of the building relate to the context across the street, I, I certainly agree with. It, it's it's the, the volume that does set back and is much higher than I'm just interested in seeing. So I appreciate you walking us through that section live in here. I know it's not always the easiest thing to do. And now you're in auto safe mode, so you're in trouble. It's going to spin for a while. Somebody ask a good one question. So I have a question. Um, I think last time that this commission was here, they were talking about how the the It's a very hard situation as a commissioner, 
And, and I have to say, Kamal, there was one thing in, that uh, I think uh, Commissioner Kamal did point out that I would say is not really an answer is the areas. I do want to consider the community. The communities here have all spoken against the project. There's not one person that spoke for the project. It is not, it's not a purview. I totally understand it's not a purview, but we still have questions to answer them, sure. to, to answer the community. It is like the commission, the, the chairman mentioned at the beginning, it is appealable, whatever decision. Um, if somehow, and we ask this with a lot of applicants, is when there are you know this much input from the community, how can we come to middle ground with engaging to the community, which you did the first time, you did a town hall, you're mentioning the, uh, the historic gondolas, now, is there a way that in this project, you don't want to go, and I went up and high, you don't want to go down from that. <clears throat> Talking, for example, that corner where you're saying, well, there's a way that we can do some seating area outside. That's an example of engaging the community that's not going to live in those apartments, that actually lives in the community. Eight feet is not engaging. Um, I think we see it with the problem how they, in all their projects, have actually made it accessible for anybody, even though they don't live there. So I would like to see more of that, even though it's not required of design guidelines. I think it's, that's more I'm looking for. Well, those are all very good comments, and, and we're not insensitive to, to the appeal from the community. Uh, and we've cried in earnest many times. Uh, James, you have a voting tally. How many points per have we had? With, uh, more than that? There are more than that here. Yeah. I so, mean, we didn't. We don't have that much pushback on projects that are similar. It's a very, okay. very important so, project. So. A very important for a community. Not only the people are living there. There's other. Well, much, much agree. Much agree uh, that there are good people here, greatly concerned. So many of them made very good points. Some of them didn't make very good points, but but the passion. I think we all felt. Uh, and some people uh, didn't, didn't have the right information, so that's why we're trying to clarify it. And some people uh, you know, misspoke, you know, some of the professionals that, that know better uh, misquoted some things and, and, and uh, skewed things. All that, we should have all that being said, you have, your, you have your chance, well, thank you. I'm sorry. All that being said, our, our day and uh, day to be heard through the public process, uh, 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 Commissioner Garcia is exactly right. This is a not black and white matter. If it were, the guys upstairs would say appropriate, not appropriate, and that's it. And truthfully, that's what it used to be, uh, except that Mark Broder came up with his downtown design guide with the hopes to improve the level of design. And I can tell you, with all the sincerity I can muster, we've worked very hard to massage and eat out every bit of value that we can and in many cases, we had to go to Mitch and say, Mitch, this is going to cost you more money. This is more, more parking in the ground. This is all these different things. And all the while, he's wringing his hands and say, okay, I, I want to do the project. I want this to be lasting. I want it to be uh, certainly something that it deserves. Now, the folks that uh, is behind me today uh, likely won't agree because they see a, a, a different view. We respect that view. We ask that our view be respected as well. Uh, and quite frankly, all these concessions, all this you know, very, very strategic development of this plan has cost Mitch a, a lot of time, and it's also cost him a lot of money. We're, we're, we're frankly out of time. Uh, we, we can't go back to, to the committee. We can't go back to the community, even though we've tried. We did have our DRC meeting. It was very positive, very productive, and we have every expectation that the, the, the wisdom of the commission We'll come forward and we'll walk out of here with a, a proof. Is there any way that you would be open to reconsider some of that first floor amenities and maybe look at options that would engage a little bit? We're, more we're, with we're open to all that and so we listen to uh, uh, opportunity to make the project better after we see the approval. Yep. Wow. <laughs> You're interrupting her. Yeah, can you? I'm fine. And, and to be honest, none of you actually criticized the design or were really specific on the design. And our purview is the design guidelines. And it makes it very, very, very hard decision. 
Well, the reason we're doing this at all today uh, has nothing to do with a historic district, although it's adjacent to one. The reason we're hearing it today is because it's in the downtown district, and these are the downtown guidelines, which are quite different. Um, the thing that um, we are most concerned about, I think, in looking at the downtown uh, design guidelines is uh, whether or not a project is responding to and engaging at street level, which is one of the most important tenants in it. We didn't see that in the previous design, and now we see that the work units engaging not only with a canopy level, but would be where we would expect to see it in a one story commercial building that might have been built in the area at the time. But if there's this continuous um, opening of doors and windows there, which certainly was not the case in the last version. Plus, there's a portal down that goes to the interior directly from the street. I have one one last um, comment um, or, or thoughts in mind that might be like an avenue for a compromised kind of um, nexus between the building and the and the bridge. Um, starting from your second floor, uh, we see the massing started to shrink, right? And then you have the deck gaps in, in the back, but, but in the front, Sherry Street, um, the massing almost the same. Right? So, and then there was that argument um, that wherever you go beyond the first story, you're blocking the bridge anyway. Uh, I'm not sure about that actually. I, I have to disagree until we see a perspective, uh, like kind of street sequential perspective, like typical urban design kind of trick to see how things will look like as we walk. And, um, you did add an actually quite positive previewability and, and, and walking through the building, uh, including access to art and, and parts and, and, and open space, which is really good. Um, but my, my point is, if if you flipped the mouth, uh, the, the massing starting from your um, second floor, uh, to flip it to be in the back, uh, you're still going to get the views of the same uh, downtown, which is towards the west, and you're still going to get only uh, just the um, first floor and a carpet to buy the equipment um, in, in, in that corner, um, which is the short street and the bridge corner. So have at any point of discussion that scheme been discussed? It sounds, if I understood you correctly, uh, it's essentially taking this end bar and, and flipping it. Uh, that's exactly the, the thought that we were uh, given from our DRC, Mr. Lazarus mentioned earlier, uh, and because of its uh, what it does to the uh, activity of the bar and the, uh, the interior corridors and so forth, uh, it, it doesn't work. Uh, I know it's going to be challenging. It's going to need to be tweaked a little bit with the uh, with the hallway, um, with the um, with the two like double loaded uh, hallway uh, starting from the the typical floor, but it may happen. Um, a potential if it is the whole way it, it itself become the link or become skywalk to connect this mass and the mass when it when it push back. We have uh, several reams of, of, of butter paper uh, expended in, in studying exactly that that idea, and it was determined by, by the, certainly the team and uh, led by Mitch that, that that was not something that we could do. Came at too high of a, a price, adding a fire stair and so forth, and it just became uh, untenable. Sure, if we are on the same page, it's going to be the same exact unit, it's just going to be pushed back, and your your walkway are the ones that's going to be just added cost because you're pushing them back. So there is a, a walkway here, we can, push, we can push these back. But they'll come out on this side, which is closer to the bridge. Is that, is that no, no, what I mean is the whole dig, the second floor dig, to be the one facing the community, not being pushed to the back, and the whole mass going all the way to the back. That's exactly what we're talking about. And because there's a double loaded corridor that comes here and serves these other units, if that were to uh, get mitigated, it would cut off. And so, therefore, we need that extra way out in case of a fire. We went at great expense and spent several uh, hours and, and days and weeks studying that, that exact option. And at the end of the day, that, along with the, all these units that would get moved from here to here, 
put them closer to the bridge and obscure uh, the views. This mass came out at the expense of uh, putting the, the other one in up front. It was understood that that, that was not a, a move we could make because of the planning of the building, as well as it's defeating the whole purpose. We, we pulled this away to start with. Uh, we'd love to, to push it back further, but it would come at the, uh, at the expense of adding fire stairs and making the, the, the flow uh, not, not the efficient. I appreciate everyone's time being here today, and I certainly can frequently sympathize with everyone who spoke against this project. Uh, but the simple fact remains, we are not the Texas Supreme Court. We are not in a position to go back and undo the things the City Council has done in the past. Um, with respect to the design, we have a recommended approval. We have stipulations that have been suggested, stipulations that have been agreed to. My biggest issue at the previous meeting was that open space and that potential for another building between this one and the bridge. That has been alleviated. Additionally, if we go to Hackberry in Nolan, we see a five-story building there in the middle of Dignity Hill Historic District. In light of those things, I am prepared to move and do so move for approval with staff stipulations at this time. Cherry Street is absent of that. Cherry Street is absent of that in the interest and only in the interest of, of having parking. Where there's not parking, you do have green space. Downtown Design Guide does qualify, you know, where there's a lesser uh, active street like Lamar is well the Cherry, or you can do the parkway uh, and have more, more green less. Uh, and the um, on street parking is potentially in support of whatever may be developed in the little more spaces? Yes. Can you explain to me again the dialogue that you had that brought the whole portal uh, the, the portal down here or the portal up here? The portal up here. The portal up there, uh, you know, as we were designing this, it just began to feel heavy. Uh, and to bring relief to the street level, all that works very well. It's when you get above this level where this bar felt a little too heavy. And so compositionally, we, we, we brought this in and now there's a uh, second amenity. Uh, it brings relief to the, uh, to the mass on both sides, as well as a second amenity. So if you live you know, at one of the units down here, you don't have to walk all the way to the end. Uh, previously, uh, the design has shown a central amenity deck pool and so forth. This one's off to the end, so this gives you a more immediate uh, amenity if you, if you live on the far end. So 
the question on circulation for that the roof plan be further developed to include mechanical uh, all the mechanical beds that will be screened from visible uh, rights of way, including the Hay Street Bridge. Um, do you see any any reason why accommodating circulation number four would further increase the height? Of no, no, no. Yeah. Right, we have a motion. We do not yet have a second for it. Mm -hmm. If we don't get a second, then the motion dies. Once. I'll give it a second. We'll see how it goes. All right. I second that. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Do I have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion, commissioners? All right. All those in favor, say goodbye by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Aye. We'll need to have a roll call vote. Corina? Aye. Fish? Aye. Lazarine? Aye. Bustamante? Aye. Group? Aye. Kamal? Aye. Garcia? Aye. Lufthun? Aye. We're split down the middle. So what's the procedure as it goes to city council? No, you just you just need a majority, but um, if they're I mean if it's a tie, there you have to try again or. Um, yeah, we've had some experience with ties. Um, you know, the only reason I would ask to break a tie at this point would be if someone would be willing to make a counter motion, but we may wind up with the same vote again. Uh, we can go through the exercise of having um, a different motion made and a different second, and we can take the vote again and see if anybody's going to make changes. Motion to deny. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And I believe we'll have to have a voice vote on that. Let's do that for the record. Corina? Aye. Fish? Aye. Lazarine? Aye. Connor? I'm sorry. Mr. Aye. Aye. Kamal? Aye. Garcia? Aye. Passes. All right. As I, said, as I said at the beginning, the next step could be right. Can you let me know which of the criteria that we didn't satisfy? I think it's the commissioner's because the motion is one of five minutes real quick. The motion wasn't qualified. Usually there's a, you know, people don't run to that right. Usually make, make a very, very specific motion as to why. In the instance of breaking a tie, this is where we go with it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and, uh, now, okay, for the business, I move to the journal.